Hey, welcome back to another ed edition of ETS Chalk Talk. We are here with Coach Robert Frith, San Juan Hills 2019 CIF champs. Cross paths uh, when you were coaching down at El Toro. And I know that you ended up stopping at San Clemente along the way before taking over the program just a couple years ago there at San Juan Hills. So welcome to the show, Coach. All right. Thank you, Brock. I appreciate you having me. Uh, you know, pleasure to be here. Yeah, definitely, man. Well, what a year to come off of. Uh, Southern California football is top tier in, around the country, and, and y'all were at the top uh, in 2019 when the CIF championship there. Um, talk to us first about some SoCal football. You've been in the scene for a while. You grew up there in San Clemente. Uh, yeah. what, makes, what makes it such a quality football down there? I think what you have is you have uh, several schools around this area, you know, in Southern California that have a combination of outstanding talent. Um, you have outstanding, uh, hardworking, well-knowledgeable football coaches, um, you know, and then they ha also have, you know, unbelievable support at their schools as well. And I think the best schools, the ones that are, that are, that are you know, year in and year out doing, uh, you know, the best are the ones that um, consistently have all three of those pieces in place, um, you know, and it starts young with these kids, you know, you, you know, earlier and earlier, uh, you know, kids are getting, um, you know, either, either approached or their, or their parents are looking for ways for them to, uh, become really good football players and skilled athletes at an earlier age. And, uh, you know, there's, I think there's also, there's more avenues for these kids to go down, uh, to improve their, their skill level. So, um, that's why it makes it such a hotbed. You know, you got great weather, great athletes, great support, and you know, uh, people who are driven to to succeed. Yeah, and and y'all, like I'm saying, were at the top last year. What uh, I'm guessing there's talent. What else made last year's team so special, and and why do you feel like you were able to win it all? I, I've never had a really good football team without a really good senior class, and so when you ask, you know, what made it special our senior class. I mean, we had two years in a row, really. We had uh, uh, groups of seniors that were fantastic. I mean, they were hardworking, close-knit uh, group of guys that would just go out there, and, you know, like work hard and practice. And, uh, you know, that energy would carry over into a game. They were prepared. You know, they took their – they took it very serious. They are very, you know, very prideful, um, you know, of, of what they needed to do and of their school and – and uh, so they went out there, and, and our senior class, they led, us, they led us to a CF championship. You know, kids did a phenomenal job. So I think that's the first thing, you know, is, is that is you got to have good, got to have good leadership. And mm -hmm. uh, they made it real easy for us to, to go out and, and, you know, make practice fun and give us the confidence that uh, no matter who we played any game this year, um, yeah, we had a shot to win. Yeah. We were talking earlier about, just uh, mantras or values or certain things you do to make a program special. Uh, I'm really fascinated with coaches who do a good job at like really creating the culture around a program. And I think the best coaches know how to do this. And there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Like you could have some really hardcore coaches who are going to, you know, that that's their style and it actually works for kids. And then you have a different type. What would you say, encapsulates your culture and how do you build up your culture how did you do it at El Toro and and now at San Juan Hills so I, I feel that for me uh, I, I'm a transformative coach you know I'm going to try to get to know my players on a personal level and try to find out you know what it is that that makes them uh, tick you know what is their why and I think that's done through communication you know that's done through um, you know, honest conversations with kids, you know, every day and, uh, you know, try to let the kids know that, you know, I'm here for them and I care about them as individuals, you know, and once you get the kids to understand that you're there for them, not only as a football player, but as a person, uh, then they're going to be, be a little bit more willing to buy into, you know, what you're selling. And so, you know, you've got to be able to establish those relationships with, with kids. I think, especially now, uh, probably more than ever, you know, as, as coaches. Um, that's the interpersonal relationships that I create and my coaching staff creates, you know, and uh, so we, again, we get to, we try to get to get, we try to get to know the kids personally. That way we've got that connection. And then, 
we then we lay out expectations. You know, we let them know, man, there isn't anything that we're going to ask you to do that we won't do ourselves as coaches, you know, that we will not lead you to uh, through ourselves. And uh, again, so we build that trust and then we show them that we, they, you know, that we're there for them. And then, uh, you know, for us, it's, there's, there's a tremendous amount of accountability uh, through senior leadership uh, courses that, that I lead the guys through. Um, and so then you get the kids who are regulating themselves. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, one of our, mon our, our biggest mantra right now is, uh, we, we call it, uh, no better, no better place than sound, uh, football. And our kids talk, you know, being, being battle tested uh, and being gritty, um, you know, and, you know, through that, it's, you know, we talk about, um, you know, we're built at the Badlands. That's our stadium's name. I right? call it the Badlands. And so, uh, which we, you know, that's something that we always talk about, you know, is being tough and being gritty and don't make excuses, you know, and be there. And uh, if it's, if it's, a, if there's adversity involved, that's a good thing because it's going to allow you to build resilience. Um, all things that kids need, uh, but sometimes they don't get. But I think that if you're going to ask these kids to do all these things, they, they better trust you to begin yeah. with. And so again, it all, it all begins with trust, getting to know the kids. And then we lay it out, you know, and then we follow through with these guys. Yeah. If I'm a senior in one of your leadership courses, what, what's my experience like? What are you teaching me? What are you taking me through? To be a humble servant. That's the biggest thing. You know, there's a book that I, that I like to use. It's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. And, uh, you know, I, I, I show these kids, you know, there's a process. And, um, you know, you, you can't be, uh, you know, too eager to get ahead of the process. Like, it's going to take time. And, uh, you know, and through, and through leadership, we talk about, you know, some of the, some of the finest, most successful uh, people that these kids can relate to. And uh, we talk about how they had to, most of these guys had to deal with some tremendous amount of adversity in their lives. And uh, that, that allowed them to grow hungry, to be successful. You know, I, I go over, there's, there's, a, there's six guys that I like to use. I like to use Muhammad Ali. I like to use The Rock. I like to use Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. Um, you know, and, uh, those guys, you know, those are just, those are a few. And most of these guys, when you start to hear their stories, um, the, a lot of, a lot of times the thing that they have in common is they are willing to outwork everyone else to be successful. I just did a, uh, uh, meeting this week and we went over Will Smith and, you know, talked about, you know, Will Smith is great with, uh, you know, his, his YouTube uh, interviews that they have on, he talks about his success and, you know, how you know, he continued to hold his head up high and he believed that he belonged to be, he belonged there wherever he was at. Um, and so, you know, we, 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 I use these guys as examples, like I said, because the kids can relate to these people who have been very successful. And a lot of them came from extremely humble beginnings, but they just worked their tails off and, you know, had a vision and, and would not allow anybody to let them stray from that vision. And you know, now they're all legends. Yeah. Interesting. What adversity have you come over? Had a, what adversity have you overcome? In life or coaching or? Well, it could be either. I'd, I'd, okay, I'll just say for life, for example. So, uh, you know, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and, you know, like a lot of kids, it, I grew up in Mira Mesa. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a little town in San Diego, um, you know, a very diverse town. Uh, Miramar Air Base is right there next to it. So, um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a great place to grow up. Uh, but like a lot of kids, when I was young, um, you know, my parents, they decided that, uh, you know, they need to separate. And so, you know, for me personally, uh, you, know, you know, growing up and, and having the, you know, the, the split home and going from one house to the other and that, um, you know, that was, a, that was a little bit, that was probably the first time in my life, you know, when I was about eight that, you know, we had to deal with that type of situation. Um, but, you know, in, in like a lot of things in life, when you are dealing with tough situations or not, maybe they're not ideal and you ask yourself, you know, well, why is this happening? Um, it, you don't always understand what's going on, but then, um, you know, sometimes there's a silver lining. And for me, you know, the one the reason why I'm in coaching now is because my parents, you know, they divorced and, you know, my mother found a wonderful husband um, and he's a football coach. And so, you know, he's been a real big influence in my life. And I could tell you if it wasn't for him and, you know, he'd be coming into my life, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be here now. 
Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that was that. And then, you know, moving around when you're little, you know, dealing with that. And, and uh, but I'd say the biggest thing is probably the, the, you know, the separation of my folks. But then, like I said, it, yeah. it worked out okay. Yeah. In coaching, yeah. I think the biggest, you know, for me, um, you know, the adversity is usually it, it has to do with, um, you know, your biggest losses. Um, you know, and again, you have a tendency to learn a lot more through losses than you do through wins, you know, just in general. We all go back and we look at our film and we, and we look at how can we do things better. But, um, you know, when you, when you suffer a, a tough loss, I feel like that, that those are the opportunities you say, okay, man, we got to get back to the drawing board here and we got to learn and grow and get better and figure out what we need to do so that that doesn't happen again. Um, so those, those are the ones that are usually the biggest lessons for me in the most adverse situations, um, yeah. are those, are those tough losses. Yeah. Cool to hear, you know, something so hard is like a separation or a divorce. And like you're saying, even in the football context, a loss can be taken full circle and actually maybe something better, you know, can come out of it, which is, yeah. you know, I think something that always gives hope to people. Um, you, you sound like you learn a lot through through a loss. Like, what would you say your greatest lesson uh, has been in the, in the football coaching world, or again in life? What, what is maybe the greatest lesson you've ever learned? I think the greatest lesson that I've ever learned came from my players when I was a young coach, um, and I was at El Toro, and and I think I might have been in my maybe my second year as a head coach, and uh, we're we're playing a game and we weren't doing so well. And so I went in at halftime and like I had, you know, maybe seen or thought it was a way that you, you address your kids. You know, I went in there and I, and I was real disappointed at the kids, you know? So um, I don't remember what I said, but, but it wasn't real kind in terms of, of their effort and the expectations that I had for them and, and, and talked about their lack of meeting the expectations. And so um, we went out in the second half and we were still flat and we ended up losing the game on like a last second play or a couple of plays that ended up, uh, you know, at the very, at the very end, the team beat us. And so, you know, I went through later on, I asked the kids, I said, man, you know, what, what, what happened? Where were we? And one kid said, you know, coach at halftime, um, you know, we were, we were looking for, uh, you know, answers. You know, and instead of answers, we got uh, yelled at, basically. And so, you know, when they went out in the second half, they didn't, not only did they not get the answers that they wanted through probably proper adjustments, um, but they were even more deflated. And I thought to myself, okay, you know, uh, you got to really, you got to really be careful with what you, what you say to kids, you know, through a game, because we tell them that you got to put hard for 48 minutes. And it may be the last couple of minutes that make the biggest difference in the game. And so no matter what happens as a, as a good leader, you have to, you have to really give these guys hope. You can, you can let them know that they're not playing so well, but they already know, you know, yeah. but that can't be the emphasis of the, of the talk of the halftime talk. They still, you know, you got to lead. And I felt in that situation, when I heard that feedback. I thought, oh, man, you know, um, that was, I wasn't doing a very good job being a leader. And so yeah. now um, I always try to keep things in perspective. It's never as bad as you think. It's never as good as you think. Um, you got to be even keel. Um, you know, and as because as a leader, they're going to follow you either way. You know, if they think that yeah. you're upset with them, then that's all they're going to play. You know, timid and tight and and not perform well. Maybe because they're mad at you. I don't know. Um, but that changed me in the way that I lead. Uh, you know, my football teams. Yeah. So if you walked into that same locker room now, do you know like like what you would say? I mean, you'd be even keeled. It sounds like, but uh, what does it look like to walk into a halftime of uh, San Juan Hills locker room where you probably weren't down a half. I don't know if you were down a half at all this year. I'm sure you might've been a couple of times, but what does it look like? What do you say? Well, now it's calm. You know, it's, it's not about, you know, it's not about yelling and being emotional. It's about fixing the problem. We were actually down at half. I, I believe in our Marietta uh, Mesa game in the first round, we're hosting um, a wild card team and, you know, they came out and they were, pumped their coach did a great job of getting his guys ready to play you know we're the number four seed home game uh you know they had a a, you know below 500 record and um you know i thought we were prepared as well 
but I could tell that, you know, he got his kids even pregame, they had, they had hope and they had hype. And so, you know, they came out and, and uh, you know, we, we struggled a little bit. It was a low scoring halftime affair. And uh, so I got in there and it was basically, Hey man, let's fix this, you know, and it's zero, zero, you know, you got 24 minutes left to play Either you're going to go out there and you're going to take care of business or your season's over. It's be a tremendous disappointment, you know? So we get the coaches together first, talk to the coaches about what we need to do to get better. And then um, the coaches go in there, they address the kids first, you know, all of their, their uh, you know, position coaches, they do their thing. And then I come in at the end and you don't, You know, I mean, it would have been a I think that would have hurt a ton if we didn't take care of business. Um, but we we just go in there and we say, hey, man, we're, we're fine. You know, it's like the Navy SEAL approach. You know, we're good. You know, we're, we're, we can go out there in the second half and, and we can take care of business. Um, we need some senior leadership right now. Uh, we fix our mistakes and we go out there and we hit the reset button and you play as hard as you possibly can for 24 minutes now uh, to extend your football uh, season and for seniors to extend, you know, your, your senior football life, you know, and so – much different approach, uh, no matter what, because yeah. you got to play. You're gonna play another 24 minutes. Anything can happen. If you shoot a lot can yeah. happen in five minutes. 24 minutes, a lifetime. You know, let's go. Yeah, yeah. I've been a part of so many locker rooms at halftime where that that experience of just getting berated and then and then not feeling motivated, feeling like crap about yourself, and going out to the second half and not having any more juice, feeling like worse about yourself and less confident. And so, yeah, I think the hope and hype and, and teaching them and, and fixing the problem is what stands out to me. And uh, I think a lot of coaches can benefit from that reality that you can't right. just go in and yell at a team and expect them to feel motivated and encouraged and more prepared. You know, it's the same. We, we talk about it with our sales team. Like if someone doesn't hit a number for a month, it's like, I'm not going to just parade you like we're going to diagnose the problem and yeah. hopefully I'm going to be able to serve and equip you so that you can do better in the second half or the second half of the month or whatever it is. And so, um, yeah. getting into, we, you know, you, y'all raise money with, with us. And, and like I said, we crossed paths when I was a sales rep for the company, uh, fundraising, we call it the F word in our company because we're a bunch of football <laughs> coaches who hated fundraising too. And, uh, yeah. just, we were up in the Bay Area and found out this was, a better way to raise money than sending out letters through the mail. Um, what, what comes to mind when you hear the word fundraising and how, how does fundraising impact your program and maybe even your experience in working with, you know, Dylan Garrity and E-Team sponsor just for a minute or two. Yeah. So when I think about fundraising, I'm going to, I'm probably going to shock, uh, you know, people that watch this. I don't hate it. Like I, I don't, I don't look at fundraising as a burden. I look at it as fun raising. Um, there isn't anything that we do that isn't an opportunity for a team building experience. So if like, we just got done selling cookie dough, right? It's something that I've done. It's, 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 you know, we, we, we make it a challenge, you know, we, we give, uh, you know, the kids incentives, um, you know, we put them in squads and we talk to the squads about going out there and, you know, selling cookie dough and, uh, uh, you know, earn points for their, for their squads, some of the competition we do. Um, we talk to the parents about kids, you know, giving them an opportunity to practice communication, you know, with, with people. Um, you know, and so it's, it's a fun thing. Yesterday, I, we just handed out the cookie dough to the kids and their parents. We did a drive through masks and gloves and, you know, they come through and you see the kids, you see the parents and the way we're living nowadays um, behind computer screens at home, it was exciting to see people. I thought, wow, yeah. this is interesting. We're doing something different, like seeing people, you know? And so um, it was a great opportunity to see the kids and see the parents, you know, like, um, you know, I, I, I don't mind talking to parents, you know, and so yeah. um, it was fun. And, uh, you know, the E-Team, you know, uh, you know, the E-Team sponsor fundraiser, it's great. You know, Dylan comes into our, um, you know, it comes into our facility. We sit the kids down. He, you know, he talks to the group, uh, gives cool examples. 
um, of you know what, you know his experiences in, in, in sports and how easy this is going to be uh, for us to raise money. And um, the kids they get out their phones and um, you know they they uh, you know they input all the information they get everything dialed in ready to go. Um, you know, and, and again, it's, it's an opportunity for them to communicate. We communicate with the parents about this. This is a, you know, we, we make sure that we have, you know, a target, a fun, you know, fundraising, fundraising ideas for, you know, you want to um, earmark, what do you want, you know? And so whether it's new uniforms, a sled bag, you know, we, we say, look, this is our goal. And as a team, you know, let's, let's achieve this. Just like we're going to try to, you know, get W on a Friday night. You know, if we need to raise some money, let's do it, man. You know, so. Um, there isn't any fundraisers that bother me. It's a, it's yeah. something we need to do. Um, you know, it's I don't feel like it's burdensome. I look at it as again opportunity, opportunity to raise money, opportunity to team build, opportunity to communicate. Yeah, perspective is everything, and a lot of coaches have a hard time with the perspective of fundraising. It sounds like you use it as like we were talking earlier, culture builder for your program. Another yeah. thing to bring your team closer together, and it's cool that you have that mindset. Of course, we wish every coach was was thinking of it as fun raising most don't and we get that too like we and, and that would be wild to see a bunch of people right now <laughs> because we are not right, right? and so that's cool right. that you got to see some people face to face obviously safe and all that um two minute drill time rapid fire answers just have some okay. fun before we get into a little chalk talk uh what right. have you done that i should do what have I done that you should do? Um, ride a dirt bike in Baja, Mexico at 90 miles an hour down a dirt road. Whoa. All right. Have you ever been to Gerlach, Nevada? You ever heard of that? No. Random middle of nowhere, Nevada. And I have a, a group of friends that are, are going on a dirt bike trip here in a few weeks. Probably not a good idea given everything. But they it's like <laughs> middle of nowhere – probably similar to Baja Mexico in that you can just freaking fly and no cool. one's around, no rules. I'm kind of terrified of speed, but I like that you do. Uh, best meal you've ever had? Best meal. Um, I would say uh, bad to the bone barbecue in San Juan Capistrano. Oh, that sounds good. I might have to check that out. Favorite song or artist you're listening to right now? Uh, well, favorite artist, Luke Combs. Okay. Close, the country? Close. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, real, and, and I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Chris Stapleton, too. So I kind of oh, go yeah. back and forth between, uh, you know, them two guys. They're both, both good. Okay. Nothing like some nostalgic country music to get you through the quarantine. Uh, oh, yeah. Favorite junk food? Favorite junk food? Um, I'd say Reese's Pieces. Nice. I haven't had that in a while. Favorite sport duo? I'm a Clay and Steph guy. Uh, Sport duo. Let's go, uh, Michael and Scotty. Michael and Scotty. We're seeing it a lot. A lot of it with yeah. Last Dance. Yeah, um, I grew up with them guys. Yeah, and you sounds like you use them as uh, your example of success. Getting cut from yeah. the JV team. Uh, yeah. Best play you've ever called. Okay, so I would say the best play would be in our CIF semifinal championship game. Uh, we're playing at Paramount High School at, at their place, and um, they tied up the game, sent it to overtime, took them two plays to score in overtime. So now we get the ball because we won the coin flip. You're going for two. Ball. I can already we're, tell. We're, we're going to – we're our, the, our two plays here back-to-back. Back. The first one is after taking an intentional grounding penalty on first down in overtime. Um, we um, did a flea flicker. We oh, ran a flea dang. flicker, and uh, our our we wheeled our back and ended up catching and tackled on the two yard line. We 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 punched in after that, and then went for two. And it Got was it. Uh, either we're going to the CF Championship at Loyola High School in LA, or we are going to go home. And people are probably thinking the biggest, most selfish idiot in the world for going for two, um, you know, in the first round of overtime. And so we ran a little trick play, throw back to the tight end. A million guys run it. Um, and he had caught it on his knees, basically, and uh, that was it, man. Sent us to the championship. So you know, Gosh, that was that was one for the record books for sure for me or for the memory books. That's awesome. Got to go for two. Got to go for two in overtime. I'm all about it. Uh, Chalk talk, white cross concept. Feel free yeah. to share your screen. Okay. We'll get after it for a little bit. Snake, 
kids. I love, so, I love how um, you guys look like freaking Notre Dame too. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Those helmets are beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, we we had a, a local reporter. He just um, talked about you know they throw out just some some stuff, some opinions, and he said three best helmets in Orange County. He said modern day three stripers. Um, yeah. Edison, uh, you know, with the um, the Michigan look kind of green, green, green bolt or something for Edison. It's a oh, yellow, that's right. Bolt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Green it's bolt. Like a lightning bolt. He, yeah, lightning bolt. And he said, uh, San Juan Hills, Golden Domer. So uh, we we're kind of, we're, we're kind of, it's kind of cool to be in that. Uh, yeah. In any talk right now, it's just nice to be relevant, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's really cool. So that's what I did. You know, that's the thing. I, when I first, I first took over, you know, uniform, same, helmet, same. Every, I don't want to change a whole lot because, again, like, I don't want to go on to be one of those coaches that goes, okay, um, this is what we're doing. That's my program. This is what we're doing. I don't care about anything else in the past. You know, that type of talk. I feel like, I, I feel like it, maybe for some it works, but I think for others, they, they fail miserably because – you don't know the relationships that these kids have with the former head yeah. coach and, and the guys that I took over for, over for did a good job. You know, they built a good foundation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the school is relatively new still. Um, so I went in there and I just wanted to assess. First year, assess everything. You know, um, build some relationships with kids, but really assess personalities, administrative support, coaching staff, like a lot of stuff I just kind of kept in place. Um, and then after the first year, we had a pretty good year, you know, we're eight and four, um, you know, we beat Edison in the first round of playoffs, lost to Calabasas and they were loaded. Um, yeah. and so then the next year I go, okay, now it's time. Let's, let's, let's make some changes and do some things. And this was a big thing for me, you know, to go in there and, and change the uniforms and go with the Notre Dame look. Um, I wanted something, I'm a simple, I'm a simple guy when it comes to uniforms and stuff. I don't like a lot of flash. So I said, you know what, our, our colors are, are uh, navy, gold, navy, blue, and gold. Um, I, I know a pretty good, you know, traditional, uh, you know, program that, you know, we can, you know, we can you know, model ourselves after. And so um, we went with it and people seem to like it a lot. So it's cool. Yeah. Coach Gerritsen, I don't know if you know Rick Gerritsen. He was at Servite for a while and he's the Chandler High School head coach in Arizona. I had, oh, okay. him, on, I had him on recently and he's 63. He took over uh, the Chandler program last year. His first year that Arizona did an open division, kind of like California's been doing for a while, state championship. And mm -hmm. it was the first time Chandler went undefeated. They got the six most dudes in the NFL from their high school in the whole country. I mean, it's loaded school. First right. time they went undefeated and won a state championship. First year head coach, 63 years old. And he's like, wow. I, didn't change it. I didn't change anything. Smart. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> There you so, go, man. Yeah, it's good. It's good to hear. It's always nice to hear people that do something similar to what you did, and they're like, "Yeah, that worked." You're like, "Oh gosh, you yeah." Know, it's 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 always yeah. nice to to have things you know be uh it uh you know kind of like I guess it's affirmation, you know, where you're yeah, that's that's it's a good idea, you know. Yeah. Um, I think like I mentioned before, I just feel like especially with kids, you know, I can't I can't say it enough with guys like. You know, these kids these days, they're different than like when I played and you played and, and people said that we were different than when our coaches played, but like yeah. they are so much different now. You know, they, they're, they're way more inquisitive. Um, you know, I think, I think we, coaches could just tell us what to do and we did it, you know, kind of like maybe thought a little bit amongst our, ourselves, like, what the heck is this guy doing? But nowadays you, you have to, you have to tell these kids, look at man, you got to lay out your plan. You know, this is, here's the big picture of things. We're going to win league. We're going to win CIF and we're going to win state. We're going to go one and zero every week. And after all this is said and done, if we don't, uh, you know, achieve one of those goals, the biggest thing that I want you to, to, to take from this is life lessons through football. So it's like you paint this huge, big picture of the kids and go, I want you to be a better person because you came through my football program. That is the ultimate goal. So if we're going to, we're going to, but that's going to happen through, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so the kids go, okay, so here's, here's the big picture. Here's the goal. 
and then you just break it down. You know, what coach like this concept right here, like I'm going to talk about this concept, you know, and it's like, well, coach, why do I, why does this X receiver need to make sure he takes a mandatory outside release? Like he needs to know exactly why. If I just say, hey, take it, take an outside release and go, he's going to go, okay. Until, until maybe there's a little bit of a, there's a path of resistance right here that he may take another path of least resistance and get this guy killed. You know, so it's like, you have to explain, this is the, the this, this, this is the what, the how, and why for every single guy on this, you know, on this field. Um, so and I'm, and I'm okay with that. You know, my coaches are yeah. okay with that, but that's the kid. That's the athlete. Those are the athletes that we're dealing with nowadays. So. Yeah. The what, how, and why. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah. draw it up for us, man. I'm excited All to right, check it man. out. Okay. All right. So, um, this is a concept, um, that has been around for years and years and years, you know, obviously I didn't make it up and I don't think anybody talking about it these days made it up. Um, but this is the, this is the Y cross concept. Um, and what you're going to guys run this a few different ways. You know, I've, I've seen guys run this, um, and they do different things with these, with these four receivers. Uh, the one that it, I would say that the one that's relatively the same 90% of the time is this X receiver. Okay. So when I say Y cross, we're taking this slot receiver who we say is our Y and we're going to run him on a crossing route, right? He's going, his aiming point is opposite hash, 12 yards. This is his aiming point. Now things can change that. Um, and I'll talk about how things change, but that's just his initial, that's the initial picture. Okay. This receiver down here, this is our X receiver. Now, what we have our guy do on this on this concept, if it's just the Y cross, he has a mandatory outside release. Okay. So his job is to make sure that he gets outside. Okay. Outside of this corner. Um, if the corner is off, if it's, if it's soft and, you know, if you, depending on technique, whatever, whatever guys, whatever coverage you guys want to run, um, his job is to get that guy out of there. Okay, so mandatory outside release. Our H, the way that we run it at San Juan, is our H has a say it has an out route. Okay, so he's gonna take this up to 12 yards. Okay, and then he's gonna break it to the out. Let me see if I even can do this. All right, so he's breaking the out. All right. So that's like your sale concept. Now, our our H, what what he's looking for here potentially is a blitzer that if this backer this safety comes over the top which right now it doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's going to be man to man because he's inside the hash but if this backer blitzes he can turn this route into an out five yard out right man beater he would still take the out uh, outside release so he'd be gone so he has the ability to adjust now so he's going to run this 15-yard out route. Now, our quarterback is going to scan. Um, this is a left-to-right scan, uh, scan read progression. So he's checking this first. Does he have grass back here? If this corner is up pressed, you know, he can you know, take the snap. He can you know, uh, take a step back, and he can just let it rip the ball to the outside to our X on the go route. He can win. Right. If the corner is soft or or uh, he stay he caps this receiver it means he stays over the top, then his eyes are going to go to this sail route here. All right. Okay. While that's happening, this our Y he is working under. We say under Sam over Mike. So under Sam, and he's working over to twelve yards opposite hash. The Y has the option to convert this into a slant if backers blitz and there's grass. So he's not going to just run this 12 yards uh, if he sees potential backers blitzing. He's our, he'd be our hot, okay? Just like the H can be your hot. So these guys can't convert this concept, okay? So he's working to the hash. Our receiver on the outside, Okay, guys run this a couple different ways. Some guys run him on a post, okay, over the top. And then some guys like to run the post hook. They'll hook him up, okay? I mean, we, can, we can call the hook if we want. All right, so one thing that I learned, and this is, and, and, and I don't know, I, I'm 
43 years old and I just learned this. Um, a lot of times when we talk about concepts, we tell our quarterback, is, the, is it an open middle or open close, right? So is there, is there a post safety in the middle of the field or are the safeties on the hash and it's an open middle? Okay, a lot of times with our, with our quarterbacks, what we've taught in the past is, hey, look at man, if there's a post safety, then you're looking sail concept to curl. And then our back can check, he can either check protection or he can arrow. So if it's a single high safety, we have two man beaters built in right now. We've got the sail concept and we have curl flat. Um, if it's a split safety, then we're looking, we can still peak this, but it's middle, right? With a Y on the cross to still, believe it or not, the curl is open a lot of times, if it, even if it's a two-eye safety. So I'll tell them, this probably isn't your best uh, best bet, right? Unless this corner, and I'm going to get to this, unless this corner falls down, right? We should say that. Well, unless he falls down, forget it. Um, so I got, to, I got to talking uh, with some guys, and they said, well, what if he falls down? Like, why, why, you know, you're, we're, we're preparing our quarterback to make a decision based on post safety, or, um, you know, open middle, closed middle. But what if that corner does fall down? I mean, I mean, you told him, like, unless he falls down, forget it. Just, you know, just get back to your, to your backside here, to the Y, the, to the, the curl flat. And I thought, you know what? I got to talking with, with some people, and they said, that's exactly what some coaches teach. Okay, here's a concept, and the concept is one, two, three, four, back five. And that's it. And that's what you're going to do no matter what happens. Because what if that corner does fall down? Have you ever seen a defense run a, run a coverage and screw up? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, I, I, they've done it while I'm the coach, not a very good coach. And, and they go, yeah. So, so even though it doesn't look good based on what they're showing, still, they scan read it. And they're like, the concept is good. You just got just go just you just scan across and see what happens and i thought wow man you know and i'm not a hundred percent bought into that but in, on some of our con concepts where we do scan um that's that's the the example that i use um and so you know there's again there's some guys that are making making a lot more money than than most of us and this is all they do you know and so anyway um our this concept, this is our standard. This is our base um, uh, Y cross concept. Um, you know, again, your back can either either help out with six man protection, or the quarterback can um, you know, change to a five man protection and just release him now. And, and usually, he's our fifth option. Um, the one, the one that always gets forgotten in this concept, in my opinion, is this post or so, like I said, some guys like to run post hook right here. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've looked at this and I'm like, this guy's wide open. But guys just, they, you know, they just look the one to two to three and they don't ever get back to that curl. So um, I'll go ahead and show, I'll go ahead and play this so you can see um, this, this concept and, and what the quarterback went through there. Okay, so right now backers blitzing. Okay, our Y, okay, right now he's looking here, right? Maybe he could have kept this a little bit flatter. But if we see this and we give him the ball right now, baby, it's it's catch and he's he's it's gonna be a big play, right? Maybe the safety, maybe the free, but right now we grip and rip, hit your hot and, and we're gone. But the quarterback doesn't throw it at him. Okay, he throws a good ball, hits the H um, on the sale concept. The this kid's an outstanding receiver going to Washington State. That's probably why he decided to just stick with it and, and still throw it to him. So the X has the outside release, the corner break off. You know, if we saw this, uh, you know, little scooch, uh, scooch step technique here by the corner, um, you know, if we saw him getting kind of, um, you know, trying to put his hand in the cookie jar, we may pump that and tell our quarterback throw the top. But really, he should have hit the Y first because of the blitz and the hot, but he stays with it. We have decent protection that that kind of whiffs, but um, he hits them up. It's anyway. – it's, um, so – when I, after my second year at Old Toro, um, as a head coach, I went through two offensive coordinators and now I'm like 33 years old and you know, we, we've done well, but like, I'm like, you know what, man, I'm the head coach. I need to take responsibility in the offense. And so I was a defensive guy myself. You know, I played um, a linebacker, you know, in college. And so uh, I, I saw what was going on in front of me, but I didn't really know what was going on behind me either. You know, um, And so I basically went in, 
I found a system that I liked and it was the Tony Franklin system. Oh yeah. And, See, and that's what yeah. we ended up running where I coached at Concord. I coached at Concord yeah. high school. Do you know, Oh yeah. Did you know Hamilton? Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. Five for five, so, man. That's him. Yep. <laughs> I, I listened to him speak at Tony Franklin clinic in Costa Mesa. Um, he talked about how, you know, he hates special teams. We don't punt, you know, he was going over all this stuff. And then I went up to Cal to watch the guys um, when they were there, him and Sonny Dykes, uh, uh, Tony Franklin, Sonny Dykes, and Rob Likens and those guys. And he was at practice. Um, and so I talked to him a little bit, you know, there too. And um, I, I bought into it. I go, I'm, I'm buying into this system. And so what I did is I got the, the DVDs and I basically over like Christmas break and maybe into January, I got up every single morning at four o'clock in the morning and I watched the DVDs. And I just st- kept, I just studied for hours and hours and hours. It's like I locked myself in the basement and I just studied and studied and studied and studied, but just like nonstop. I watched them a million times. And that's how I was able to understand this stuff because I listened to people talk, you know, yeah. and then I, and then I lived it as a head coach and as an offensive coordinator. And I still think that there's guys who are way smarter than I am and way more innovative. Um, Cause I see things all the time. I'm like, Oh my gosh, like that is awesome. Um, but I had to just, dude, I had to like bear down as a head coach. You do what you got to do, man. You know, like yeah. anything else. And so I don't tell that story to a lot of people because people really don't care. They don't ask. Um, but that's yeah. how I learned is I just, it was yeah. freaking grind because if you don't, you're not going to be very good, you know, yeah. and you're not going to have a job, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. No, Hamilton, he named his son Brock, just saying, but uh, uh, I, transfer, I transferred high school to play with him. Actually, he was really, I mean, he was young. He's like 26, 27. He's at Clayton Valley high school, which I don't know if you know, Tim Murphy, it's a really good program there. They won, they played Aquinas and they won a state championship this year, but and he went to Concord, and they did their yep. thing there. And the Tony Franklin stuff was really interesting to me. I I didn't spend a lot of time because I coached with Hamilton at Concord. I didn't spend a lot of time. I didn't do anything on offense. I just did um, D line, and then you know watched him coach O line. That's what he's good at. He's he's a tremendous offensive line coach. But he's he's now the uh, tight ends coach at Texas State. So slowly but surely, he's okay. He was at middle. Uh, not middle yeah. Tennessee. That, that's yeah, I think where it, Tony Franklin that's what, went, but right. he wasn't there. He was at another FCS school, Murray State. Um, okay. And then he just got a job this year at Texas State. So good for him. He's a he's a really smart guy. He's very charismatic. Halftime yeah. speeches, dude, killer. Oh my gosh, dude, the guy gave right. the best speeches in the world. Um, mm-hmm. Just incredible. I, but, you know uh, what? We, remember, we're talking like we're talking speeches. I'm not a real big pregame, like rah rah, like you know, Newt Rock me, like speech guy. Like I'll go in there. We have we have some stuff that we do. It's just tradition, you know. Um, we do the Lord's Prayer. We have some other stuff we do. You know, it's like just San Juan Hills, like stallion football, like stuff. So, and then and then we go. I'm like, dude, I don't want these kids to be too high or too low. Let's just go out there, yeah. take care of business, be efficient, be mercenaries. Like we talk about all that stuff. And then based on what happens at ha- during the first half, that's when like that, yeah. I, the energy of the game, what's going on. That's when I, yeah. I feel like I'm way better at halftime. Um, giving speeches that are positive, not negative. Like I freaking ripped those kids at that, this Long Beach Jordan game. Like it was, it was bad. I went in there, man. I, I was such an idiot. And so, um, but at halftime, it's like, that's when everything comes out, you know? Yeah. And it's like, let's go. And I feel like, that positive energy just comes out, you know, and uh, much, much better halftime speeches than pregame speeches. Yeah. What happened with us was I remember it, our pregame speeches were so good, but we really sucked. Like he took over a really crappy program at Concord mm-hmm. and I transferred. So I was on varsity as a sophomore. They went 0 10, you know, my freshman year when I was at Clayton Valley. And he was like, Hey, you know, I don't know if I got to keep doing these speeches because we're getting blasted. And I, I remember feeling mm-hmm. like so hyped and I wasn't really a hype guy. Like I wasn't jumping around. I was the guy like standing outside where everyone was jumping. I'm just kind of like chill, but mm-hmm. it was awkward when we would get this huge speech. We'd, you know, be hair on fire running out of the, running through the paper to start the game. And then it's like 21, nothing first quarter. Yeah. It's like, this is okay these speeches are cool like you are freaking new rockney but we are not 
you know, a good football team. We really suck. Right. So we, we right. need more help. And, and he's, I think he's gotten better and better as, as a head coach. And then obviously to where he's at now, but um, yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, maybe let's do one more of these just so we have another clip. And then I didn't realize I, I said three thirty central time. I have it on my calendar as three thirty Pacific time. So I thought I had a ton of time right now, but okay. Um, okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how I messed that up with coach, but I should. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll talk about an adjustment. Down. Okay. For, for okay. some guys might like, um, you know, we we're running this out of, out of 10 first now, but um, I'll talk about an adjustment um, that guys can do if they, you know, if they want a quick adjustment um, and, uh, and then go from there. I'll show this clip. Maybe I'll show this clip and then the adjustment. Yeah, that's great. Okay. All right. Um, so this is, this is the same play. Um, we are uh, in the fourth quarter and um, the same concept that I talked about, you know, uh, we've got mandatory outside release. We've got this 12 to 15 yard out. Um, we've got the, the cross, you know, 12 yards opposite hash. And then we've got the backside. We, we ran this last year as a backside curl. Um, the back can check release and he's going to come to the opposite side of the cross. So he, we're always wanting him to protection check. He could stay in if we see pressure or if the quarterback feels like, hey, you know what, we're good. We can slide the protection to where the blitz is going and he can free release the back. Okay, it's, it's, it's his choice. Or we can, we can help him out if he needs some help. So um, here's the same concept that we talked about. Uh, we've got uh, he's gonna, he's in the peak here now open middle and this is gonna happen quick so this guy's pressed but he's got butt to the sideline right so his job is to get mandatory out service however he has to um, but now what he's looking at here is it gets pretty cloudy with safety off the hash right so his eyes are gonna go scan one to two but right away this kind of looks ugly and now he's got to come back to the Y cross middle of the field. Hits him a little bit late, right? Kid catches the ball with tremendous amount of courage right here. Um, you know, could have got him a little bit sooner, um, but kid makes a good catch, and that's how it is, man. Sometimes you got to catch the ball, you know, get it lit up a little bit, hold on to the ball, and, you know, live the fight another down. Now watch if you look at here. That's um, – yeah, I was looking to see the backside curl, but this guy does a good job hanging with the backside curl. Our back stays in there to help out. He does not free release. Um, but that's the that's the why catch no football. Um, again, if you're going to run run this concept, it's always nice to have a guy who's going to run in there uh, fearless. Um, you know, and then it's the same concept. This would be the same concept, but now instead of the Y running the cross, we have our H running the cross. So now you've got mandatory outside release, and you can run this wherever you want. You know, we'll run it to the boundary. Uh, or wherever, it doesn't matter. You know, we'll run a sale concept into the boundary with the cross coming from the field, um, doesn't matter. Um, okay, one thing that I want to show you, so probably have a decent idea about the concept. Like I said, a lot of guys run this. It's probably a, a play that um, people have, anybody who, who throws the ball around a little bit probably has the white cross and four vert, you know, maybe mesh as like the top three concepts that they, they go over. Now, um, there's some things that you could do to, you know, it's always nice to, you know, run this, you know, bring, put three into the boundary, to put a guy in motion, you know, bring him back, just, you know, confuse the defense. Those are some things that we're, we're trying to get a little bit more into is, um, you know, some smoke and mirrors with some of our concepts. But things that guys do also um, with this receiver, instead of having him run, always run, you know, the out concept here, a lot of times guys will also, they'll bubble him, right? So they'll go, go bubble, cross, curl. Um, what we like to do too sometimes is we'll go like a fast screen. So he'll, he'll take two steps up, punch back, um, and then we'll have this slot receiver take run what we would call a hero route, and he runs the go. So now you've got one, two, three, four. Um, so just different ways that you can um, – I, mean, I, I kind of made a mess here uh, – different ways that you can put guys in the same um, lanes – and run basically run the same concept, right? Like I look at this as a vertical lane concept to the right side, you know? And then from the left side, it's more of a horizontal lane. That's why I told my guys, if it's an open middle, I like the left side here because it's the cross coming from the field. You know, vertical lanes uh, versus post safeties. Um, uh, and then you got your lateral lanes um, versus uh, open middle, right? 
And so however I can get my two receivers on this side to occupy the same vertical lanes that we talked about, one was here, and I put, brought another guy and put him in the same vertical lane just at a different point in the field against a single high safety, that's like, that's just like, you know, uh, just air raid football. Um, I like to be creative on this side. Typically on my cross side, he's always going to run the cross with a hot adjustment. And then it's just, what do you do with this guy? Some guys want to run a dig route. Some guys want to take the top off and, and run the post route. You know, if the safety starts to get greedy and he wants to jump the, the, you know, that cross to help his buddy out, then your post might be wide open right over the top, you know, um, we call it, like take the top off post. But a lot of guys like to run a curl. Um, and then I know that there's, there's lots of coaches that probably run this a hundred different ways and there are going to be are 10 times more creative than I am. But, um, you know, this is what works for us and, and where, you know, where kids are, are able to, uh, to grasp. Cool. So, um, you know, hope that helps uh, you or, or somebody out there. Um, you know, it's fun to talk about football and you, I feel like a lot of guys, you get in the zone, man, you just start rambling on. So hopefully. Oh, definitely, man. No, I love it. Well, good stuff, dude. Um, really appreciate it. Thanks for hopping on the show. Um, and best of luck during thanks. all of this craziness, man. Fo football's coming back soon, but thanks for hopping on.